Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Brennan Bliss. He is the founder of Pixel Cut Labs in Dallas, Texas, and he is going to share with us all his SEO knowledge and how he's been able to become so successful himself, as well as help his clients uh, find those ideal customers that they're looking for. Brennan Bliss, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to get started. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Brennan, and uh, who it is that you like to help. Well, so I uh, I founded this small SEO company, search engine optimization company, uh, back in 2014. It actually started off as a web design company, albeit I didn't really know much about what I was doing. I was just entering high school at the time. Um, but I figured out that, okay, so if I want to get some clients, uh, I'm going to need to learn how to get in front of more people for web design. So I learned SEO and got in front of some big companies and realized, why don't I just do this SEO thing for a living? Because this helped me grow. I can do it for other companies. And that's exactly who we help. We help small businesses, typically small businesses with between $1 and $25 million annual revenue. Uh, we look for small businesses with small teams, and they typically like to operate on a cash basis. These are stable companies that are growing, uh, but not growing as fast as they'd like to. Um, so working with small businesses, typically also ones that have worked with SEO agencies in the past because we have a pretty solid plan for getting something to happen, getting some results. And we like them to see off the bat that it's going to be a better experience than all those in their past. Mm. Yeah. Well, tell me about your background because, you know, usually when people are starting a business, they've got, you know, quite a few years behind them trying all these different jobs and then maybe falling into uh, you know, something that they like to do, whether it's web design or SEO, but you, uh, 14, you know, what <laughs> made you think, all right, this is what I want to do. Yeah, well, that was almost six years ago. Uh, and it was, it, it, I hate to say it, but as cool as it would be if it sounded like that, if that were what happened, it was a much longer, more intricate story that started out with little old me being, little young me being bullied. Uh, I didn't have many friends in school, so I, I just started making websites, made one for my mom, made one for her friends' companies, small businesses, and the word got around. Then when I learned SEO, I re- I got listed at the top of Google for the search Dallas web design company. Uh, that was what I targeted. Then, of course, big company calls me the College Football Playoff Foundation, massive national corporation, uh, national nonprofit. We did their website, and that gave me the opportunity to take a step back and say, wow, I was able to get this business for my web design company by doing something that is is really it's uh it's free free marketing it's uh mm-hmm. free marketing when you do it yourself and it's pretty powerful and it's content based and you're actually helping people with it so i said hey, to heck with this web design stuff i love the web design but why don't we just start doing this seo thing and we specialized as an seo agency and been doing that for six years got a team of four now plus a, a handful of content writers and we we've been trailblazing with national awards, very successful campaigns, and very proud of my team, very proud of what we've been doing. Hmm. So I I guess one of the advantages of uh, being so young and getting into this is you probably didn't uh, have the experience as many people did and the the old things of SEO you just really figured out what's working now and you know started off from there and to get ranked for what Dallas web design is that what you said yeah um, you, know, you know it's a pretty tough word to rank yeah. for how you were you able to achieve that 45 out of 100 now that I know that well when I learned SEO the articles I read weren't trying to tre- teach any of the trickery. So I don't know any of the trickery. The trickery is all this, these spammy backlinks, these low quality content generation. No, what I read was you need to put good things on Google, on your website, and you need to make it easy for Google to find it on your website. And you need other websites to prove to Google that your website is worthy of the traffic. And that comes down to three things. The first one being high quality content, that's a blog. That's a very helpful blog for users, for your target audience. I started the blog. That was one thing. Number two, making your site easier for Google to understand and read. That's another 30% of the, of the pie. And the way that works is 
going in and optimizing your site's URL structure, optimizing your website's navigation, creating site maps, adding meta, metadata to all the pages, title tags, doing all these little technical things on the site so Google can understand your site as well as your users can. And then lastly, the hardest part for me was learning backlink generation, but that kind of just goes right off of the content. Uh, backlink generation, if you don't know, is essentially getting other websites to link to your website, higher quality websites typically, that's the goal, and they're gonna link to something and we just have them link to our high quality content. Uh, it's, it's really, it's those three parts that I used to get Dallas Web Design ranked and now we're ranking nationally. I mean, not only Dallas SEO, which is an even harder keyword, but we rank nationally for small business SEO, small business web design, all of these terms that bring in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of business just because of this SEO thing that we don't, I mean, we buy the same, we charge our clients for the same plan that we use for our agency. $3,800 a month. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's yeah, really. But when you're talking about <laughs> companies that, you know, being number one in the search engines can make a massive difference even uh, to being number two or three, uh, you that's know, the what I investment love is certainly worth it uh, for SEO. Exactly. And that's why I love doing it. Mm. Yeah, it, it's so rewarding to be able to provide that for somebody and just having the knowledge. But the thing is, you know, you, you basically boil it down to three things. You know, it's, things. It's, it's pretty simple. Quality. It's just it's, it, all about it's the quality. quality and, you know, the system that you have devised uh, to, to go about that. So let's get into some of your clients and talk about the problems that they are having that they're not featuring on page one of Google or the other search engines right now. Uh, what kind of issues do you see them having and you know, why do they come to you to get that solved? Well, unfortunately, the SEO industry <laughs> has uh, been flaunting a, a, this sales tactic that makes it, the industry just look bad. I mean, over committing across the board to things that cannot actually happen. I mean, mm. it, which means that everybody's going to go with the company that commits to the most. Think, I mean, honestly, good people expect other people are good people. So they're going to go with the company that says that they can do the most. We always underbid and we say that we can do this in six to 12 months when we actually think it's going to take three to six months and we charge for it and we do a set number of deliverables. But the other company is going to say three to six. Hell, they might even say two to four months. Uh, and that's something where if it's a first time client, they're just going to go to the other company because the other company's deal sounds better. Same price, same deliverables, quicker return. Right. Right. That's definitely uh, more attractive if uh, yep. I was looking for the first time. Yeah. But we leave our proposal open because we'll know we'll, they'll come running back if they don't get what they want, which they typically don't. So we, our audience, our clientele, 80% of our clientele is clients who have used another SEO agency in the past. And our retention rate is 98%. Hmm, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> and these are people that have previously left other SEO companies, which means we're doing something right in comparison. I mean, we, we're solving the problem of being the reliable partner that these people are looking for to handle their hard-earned money. Hmm. So and we have the processes in place to do it as well, which most agencies don't. Right. And, and that's a good thing to know. And, you know, that's my next question. You know, how are you able to come in and rank even nationally, never, never mind just uh, in Dallas for all these terms pretty quickly where, you know, other agencies that have been around for five, 10, 15 years, you know, still haven't gotten up there. Well, I thought it was a funny testament to see that, uh, a 15 year old in his, uh, the back of his classroom could outrank a company that has millions of dollars in revenue that's been around for 15 years. I just chuckled a little bit at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I chuckle at the fact that you were doing it in the back of your classroom. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Where else was I to do it? Um, <laughs> but no, so I, I mean, there are missed opportunities. You do keyword research, you find the missed opportunities and you target them. Of course, I didn't know this at the time. I had $50 to my name and my, my weekly allowance was $5. Um, and you know, it, it's, I didn't have the software to do the research. So I just got lucky in choosing the keyword, but that wasn't, I mean, it's not like I got lucky in building the business. It's not been, it's not been a very easy thing to do, but I, I keep going because I know that I help small business owners dreams come true every single day. I mean, that's, mm. that's the reward. 
That is rewarding. Obviously, uh, you know, when you help people like that, you give and you're going to get as well. It's rewarding both ways, not only, you know, helping another business uh, create a, a life and an income, but obviously for yourself as well, you produce quality results and you're going to get uh, rewarded for that. Um, so th talk to me about some of the processes then that you use. I know you say you have a lot of this systematized. Uh, what kind of processes do you go through when you acquire a new client? So every single step the, the process is documented to the extent that you've never, ever imagined. I mean, like, it's the second you sign the agreement. I mean, even from the first contact, the, the steps that we go through to teach you about your campaign, to teach you about what's going on and what we can fix. That whole thing is a proven documented process in that we start and we're able to find what needs to happen. We'll choose, we'll suggest two of our five plans for you to choose from. And once that plan starts, and what differentiates the plans is, is the number of each deliverable in terms of backlink and backlink quality on a scale of one to 100, uh, content and, and length of content, so number of blog posts and length of the blog posts and on-site changes, and then a and number of on-site optimization. So it touches those three categories. But I mean, we have a plan that starts at $997 a month, and we have a plan that's $16,800 a month. And both plans have the same types of deliverables it's just the number and quality of those deliverables that changes and it's set. And every single month in our project management system, what's going to happen when a deal starts is it's going to refresh all of these deliverables that we need to do. And we're just going to have to tackle them throughout the month before we bill. Um, and doing all these things over time, it's like living at the margin. It's if you save $5 a week, you'll end up with 19. I mean, you'll end up with whatever 52 times five is at the end of the year. If we do, mm -hmm. if we do what we need to do every 12, every four weeks, then at the end of the 12 months, you're going to be ranking. It's all the plan, the deliverables are directly connected to the goal and that's how they were created. Excellent. So, um, you know, talk to me about uh, different kinds of businesses now. Say you've got a local uh, plumbing business, you know, what kind of program would they be on compared to? They would likely you know, be on our local, our local SEO playbook and that, the way that works is you're getting 800, 600 to 800 word blog posts every month. You're getting uh, four backlinks, four article-based backlinks with a domain authority of 10 to 20. And you're getting Yext local listing management, which helps you sync your listing location and data to over 60 platforms from Google Maps to Apple Maps to Google My Business and, and uh, Yelp and all of those yellow pages. Uh, which is extremely helpful for local companies. And then you get a dedicated account manager who's going to help you with strategy, a dedicated SEO specialist who will help you with strategy throughout the entire experience. Hmm. Right. Talk to me about the, the linking part, because that's always very controversial. You know, you say <laughs> in a package like this, you're getting four links. Well, you know, when you look at some of the competition, they might have hundreds of links. You know, how long is that going to take to catch up? Yeah, well, you get hundreds of links for $900 run. <laughs> right. Here's how it works, okay? So domain authority, is, domain authority is the authority that a domain holds in the eyes of Google. It goes up and down based on the number of sites linking to that site. This is a third-party data using the Ahrefs, which is software that ranks mm -hmm. on a scale of 1 to 100. And going from 0 to 10 is easier from going to 10 to 20 by a factor of 10. So every 10 jump is... 10 times harder. So it's logarithmic is what that scale is called. What we do is we target domains that are in the scale of 20 to 40 for this local SEO playbook campaign, this local SEO managed local SEO campaign. That's 997. And then for other ones, we're going to be targeting 40 to 60, 60 to 70. 60 to 70 is like Forbes.com. But zero to 10 is a website that was created yesterday. Mm -hmm. 900 links or 100 links for, 90, for $900. Those are all going to be zero to 20 links. The links we're acquiring, I mean, zero to 10 links. The links we're acquiring are going to be 10 to 30 to 40. And what, mean, what that means essentially is if we're pointing higher authority domains to your website, Google's going to make the association that your website is also a high authority site. If you're getting a bunch of spam links, Google's going to make the association that your website's a spam website. Right, so it's definitely quality over quantity um, when it comes to linking. And I imagine it's just uh, all over. I want to talk about the content. Uh, have you done research that suggests that a 600 to 800 word 
uh, content piece is uh, the ideal uh, length? It's, it's the ideal for a local business. That's different. It's different okay. for the type of business. So when we're talking, if you go to our blog, which we post four times a month on, those are going to be 1,200 to 1,600 words, but we're a national company. So it's mm -hmm. a little different in that sense because when we go to the blog and look at, um, if we're searching about SEO, for example, um, so one of our recent posts is essential SEO tips for your startup. Now there's going to be thousands of posts on that already on other sites. So the way we're going to differentiate ourselves is doing independent research. It's going to be length of quality content. So not just length of content, not using filler words, but length of quality content. So new things, new information, and then also those backlinks that we're acquiring. But 30% of that is the quality of the length of the quality content. So if we have a high competition industry, we're going to need longer content. Hmm. All right. The third piece of that is the technical stuff. So uh, share with me just how important the technical aspect of things are. It seems to me that Google is really looking more into the technical aspect of things and uh, rewarding sites that really have their technical stuff together. Well, let's start with the basic. Let's talk about a website that's not mobile friendly, if that still exists, right? <laughs> um, so Google, for the longest time, I mean, we know this data, there's this statistic that more than 65% of all searches are done on mobile, right? Right. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. So, and so, and especially, especially local. Absolutely. Oh, for sure. Um, so in, in Google, for the longest time up until the middle of last year, Whenever Google would crawl websites to understand the websites, to index them in the, their, in the Google search results, they'd be doing so emulating a computer. So their mm -hmm. so bots would emulate a desktop, and it would render the website as if it were a desktop. Well, that's how the results would show in Google. It would show the desktop results no matter where you looked at it. But since 65% of searches are using mobile, Google said, you know what, let's indexing websites as if we were mobile sites. So when Google scans a website, it's looking at it as if it were a phone. And no matter where you are, if you're on desktop or if you're on mobile, it's always going to be mobile results, which is why the term mobile first has come. So the first and foremost step of, of technical SEO is ensuring that the website is optimized for mobile to the extent possible. I mean, mm -hmm. to every extent possible. The second step is going to be making sure we're spoon feeding the data Google needs about the business to understand what it does to Google. And we do that with a snippet of code called schema markup. Schema markup, if you haven't heard of it, is essentially this block of code. It's in JavaScript JSON format, which is just, it says, define the business name, business name is X. Define the number of employees, number of employees is X. Define category, number of the category is X. So we're feeding that data to Google, so it doesn't actually have to read the site to understand that. The more data Google has about your business, the more likely you are to show in results because it has more confidence in your business. So that's mm -hmm. the second step. And the third step is make third of three steps. Everything we do in threes here is making it easy for Google to navigate your site. And that's comprised of another three things. It's your navigational structure, your URL structure, and your site map. So we make it easy for Google to get around your site. And then, of course, optimizing the meta tags, title tags, making your site fast enough, all these little things that are included in the comprehensive SEO audit. And the better your technical SEO, the less links that you're going to need to compete? I mean, you're always going to need links, but if you have a site that has your SEO, you're, if you have the same backlinks, the same high quality backlinks as a competitor and their site is optimized more than yours is, your site's not going to be in front of theirs. So mm -hmm. it just extrapolates and it multiplies your efforts and everything else that you're doing. That's the first thing that you do is optimize the website. Excellent. Well, you know, like I said, it seems like you've got everything really systematized and it seems very straightforward and simple. Uh, and obviously it's what gets you results. Now, looking at your website, pixelcutlabs.com, uh, something else really uh, stands out to me. Obviously, when you have results that you have, you want to shout about them and you know, being a top 10 agency in the US and being number one in Dallas, these are all things that you've uh, featured in, but also having Forbes and TED and Adweek and SEMrush and Inc and USA Today, you know, how important is that to really help close and convert that business for you? 
Uh, I mean, I'm, I believe every single touch point in the sales process because I still handle all the sales personally. We're still a small company. Uh, so if you call us or email us, it's, it's me, the founder and CEO answering it. Big deal, right? <laughs> um, but no, what it comes down to is every single thing that you can say about your company that makes people feel more comfortable about working with you is going to help. Uh, so we say everything. We put our Better Business Bureau. We put our Google Partner status put um all of our client logos we put all of those features right at the top it's it's all very important to me and then we're also a specialized company we don't spread our services too thin we do seo and web design you can go to someone else for some other things and we'll help you find those people we have a, a database just for that but you can come to us and expect that we know seo and web design because we're not distracting ourselves with 50 other services hmm. And like you said, you post your blog uh, four times a month, which is great. I want to talk about one of the recent uh, articles that you just posted, outdated SEO trends to leave behind in 2019. <laughs> uh, what do you see that is just a waste of time and isn't working anymore? What was that? It was the paying for links. It was uh, what, writing for robots only and then the exact matches, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. So three really, really cruddy strategies. <laughs> uh, you get a domain name that literally says your service. Like we, we compete with companies that like, are like DallasSEOCompany.com. I don't know if that's an actual one. I made that up. I hope I didn't just send traffic to my competitor. Um, <laughs> um, but no, essentially, uh, that's keyword stuffing in the URL. It's not organic. It doesn't look organic at all. Uh, Google will catch that. And then intrusive ads in your site, big pop-ups, right? All these things are going to turn away mobile search bots because that's hugely intrusive to the mobile experience. And then uh, I guess the other one was paying for links. You shouldn't go out and pay for links. The way we acquire backlinks is extremely organic. We have contacts at publishers and we write content for them and we are credited as the author and our clients are credited as the authors um, rather than just going to other websites and saying, we'll pay you for your links, right? Or going and yeah. generating this link wheel, which is how you get hundreds of links for $900. Um, and then finally writing for robots, stuffing your page with keywords. That's a silly tactic. I mean, there's no success from doing that. Your site will do really well in search for about a month, and then you'll get hammered when Google catches up with it. Right. And, you know, you said a couple of times there, it's the user experience that seems to be ultimately important now in the eyes of oh, Google. Yes, that's underlying beyond, I mean, everything else. If you don't have a good user experience, first off, how are you going to convert people that come to your website because of SEO? And secondly, how is Google ever going to appreciate your website if it can't get past a pop-up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Well, is it, talking of user experience, uh, you know, let's uh, hear the experience of some of the users of your service. Uh, give me an example of somebody that you've worked with. You know, what kind of condition were they in when they came to you, Brennan? Uh, what problems did they have? What were you able to do for them? And ultimately, what did it mean to their business? Well, here's a company that actually didn't work with another SEO agency before. It's called Eleven Wellness. Shout out to them. They're based in Dallas. They're at Med Spa. Um, and they're, they're one of our new clients. And after only four months of working with us, they went from not ranking for any of their 20 target keywords to ranking in the first, second, and third page for all of them. And these are keywords like Botox in Dallas, uh, IV treatment Dallas, uh, microdermabrasion Dallas. These are very high traffic keywords. Their business has increased by 65% in the past four months because of that. I mean, and that's, I mean, a lot of money. <laughs> that's a, yeah, really. I mean, uh, the med spa, I'm sure that's pretty competitive as well. There's certainly yes. money made in that industry. Yeah, and another client um, who does uh, rcsupplies.online.com, one of our e-commerce clients who had worked with another agency before, worked with three agencies before staying with us and is on a 24-month plan with us now because he loves working with us. Um, it's what, what really happens on the site. Uh, we created this page for Reclaimed Wood Tabletops. It ranks nationally for that keyword, Reclaimed Wood Tabletops, and that generates hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue quarterly. So... Um, well, excellent stuff. It's all about getting results. Obviously, happy clients are going to stick around for a long time. And with 98% uh, retention, you obviously have lots of happy clients. So, Brennan, if uh, somebody is listening to this and they want to be a happy client as well, how do they reach out to you? 
they can send me an email directly. My email is B as in boy, R E N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, E N at pixel, P I X E L, cut, C U T, labs, L A B S dot com. Well, Brian, this has been uh, very interesting. Uh, lots of great content from you. Uh, you know, it's, it's simple and it's quality. And uh, you've got to be looking for those things. Uh, quickly, if somebody, you know, is doing research, uh, what kind of questions should they be asking an SEO company and what kind of things should they be looking out for to say, oh, this is the wrong company for me? Yeah, what is the exact list of deliverables that we get with the campaign, number one? Number two, how do you acquire your backlinks? And number three, how do you make sure that I know what's going on with the campaign all the time so I'm not in the dark? Excellent. So uh, make sure that everything is transparent and above board and none of that black hat stuff going on. You got it. All right, Brennan. Well, I appreciate you spending the time with me today. We're listening to Brennan Bliss. He is the founder of PixelCutLabs.com, based in Dallas, Dallas Texas. Uh, Brennan, thanks very much for being my guest on the Trust Factor Radio today. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. I appreciate it. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.